ignition sequence start. Good afternoon, fellow space lovers. Uh, <clears throat> it's been a, a few days. Obviously, uh, bright and early Saturday. It would have been uh, 6 a.m. Mountain Time, my time. 7 a.m. Central Time. Uh, Starship launched for its second integrated flight test. It absolutely went. And a lot of the stuff that I had mentioned to you guys about earlier in the week and such as we built up to the, the launch of Starship actually ended up taking place. Stuff like the four, uh, you know the T-minus 40 second hold. That did actually, that did happen, sorry. That did absolutely happen and there was definitely a period in time where most of the broadcasts that I uh, I tracked for that day were worried that there, there had been a scrub there. Uh, the hold actually ended up being exceedingly brief as SpaceX decided to go on with the launch of uh, of Starship and I actually currently I on my second monitor I have some of the replay taking place from that from launch day just some takeaways on my end as now I have done the virtually all-nighter for both uh, integrated flight test one and integrated flight test two um, this one was absolutely amazing one of the best things I've ever seen. Uh, if any of you guys caught any of my live stream, I get a little teary-eyed at the end. It was the the months upon months of work that I saw them put in. I've, I've tracked Starbase almost every day remotely. Um, so good to see see this launch go the way that, that I think all of us kind of hoped it would, right? Um, didn't end the way we all wanted it to, but it's all about steps forward. I say it a lot if you watch any of my football videos. Same thing. We're, with football teams, when, when you have a bad football team, like I'm a Packers fan right now, we're kind of a mediocre, pa or you know, compared to previous years, we're a, a rough team. But if each and every game that you're playing, you, you learn a little bit more about the, your identity and what is going on and all this kind of stuff, you become better and better as time progresses. The mistakes that happened in the first integrated flight test did not happen this time. Okay, like let's talk. Let's start stage zero. Stage zero being the the orbital launch mount, the uh, the pad, the the water cooled plate, the deluge system. From what I have seen through reports by Elon Musk and SpaceX and various other NASA space flight, who I always always recommend to you guys. Please, if you did not watch their stream of the, the launch, go check it out. It's, they did an amazing job. They did coverage starting at like 9 p.m. They went all night. They worked very hard to bring many, many camera views and great commentary. And they always teach so much. So please go do that, right? But through reporting from all these sources, there's no major repairs that need to be made at the launch site. That's huge. That was over over a month, probably closer to two months after the April launch was dedicated to having to fix the pad, to pour the concrete, to install the plate, to build the deluge, to do all this stuff. And this time, almost no damage. They said they've cited some minor stuff, but, but the minor stuff is easily fixable and we start, you know, positively moving along through that. So stage zero. Compared to last time, uh, an absolute success. If I can find graphics of both, I will put them right here. Okay, if I can. The launch itself. Last time, three Raptor engines burnt out right at ignition. This time, none. All 33 Raptor engines carried this ship and booster to space. They made it to space. They did it. 
we all thought that there would be these problems, right? We're worried about fires. We're worried about this thing blowing up on the pad because we've had such weird experiences with Starship in the past. It didn't happen. They learned. And they, the things that they did to make the vehicle better worked. Once in the air, engines weren't flaring out. They weren't burning out and exploding and none of, none of it none of the pops and sizzles that we saw last time absolutely none of it this time you could see all 33 raptors lit up again from right here there it was beautiful the 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 massive mock diamond so like when when the ship is lifting off and it does the the fuel makes the uh like the the fire makes the, the the beautiful blue diamond shape. Like, it's just absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. In the air, there were problems, right? But it's still a test flight. It's still, we expected it to blow up where it blew up last time. Have some nuts things happen. Things that we didn't need, didn't want. Things that'll hold us back with the FAA and with fish and game and all this stuff. If we have to make big altercation, or you know, if they have to build onto the pad and do all this stuff and we end up in trouble and, and you end up having to redo all these builds, then we're in a lot of trouble. They, didn't, they don't have to do any of that. Let's, let's get to stage separation. Okay, so as the vehicle is ascending, it reached max Q. Max Q is the point with the most aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle. You're passing through it. It is a period in time in the air where the most aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle is currently happening. And they made it. They got clear of max Q. It's amazing. They did an amazing job. Absolutely outstanding. Outside of max Q, you hit Miko, main engine cutoff. Followed by the use of the hot staging ring for the very, very first time. And hot staging also worked successfully. So hot staging. NASA Space Flight has an amazing video on hot staging. Go check it out. I can actually... I'll see if I can find the link and I'll throw it right down below in, uh, in the description. Hot staging is essentially that we there's a the booster and the booster top where the ship sits. Okay, in between the ship and the booster, they put a six foot steel plated ring in between the two. Essentially, that steel plate, the hot staging ring, works as a flame diverter for the booster. Okay, because what's going to happen is when it becomes time for stage separation, they ignite the ship's engines while it is still attached to the booster they just gimbal out the engines and the flames kind of roll out a little bit and then once they separate them they tighten them back up and because of physics because the booster is now almost out of fuel and this thing still has a ton of fuel you, weights and, and speeds literally it pushes the booster away and it takes off and we got to see all six engines on starship also running beautifully now right after this takes place right after this takes place they go into the the boost back burn for the booster which essentially they would start to re-correct the shape the uh grid fins start to try to steer you a little bit and then what they were going to attempt to do is a soft water landing where they were going to essentially land how falcon lands on a drone ship but they were going to sit it down on the water just let it go into the water and we didn't get that far because just after the boost back burn, the FTS activated on the booster and it blew up. Uh, to, to this point, I have not seen why. And I'm sure that SpaceX does not know why in this moment either. I'm sure that they are doing everything they can to figure out why, um, you know, this situation took place. But the booster exploded. But when the booster exploded, you could still see the ship traveling downrange and downrange beautifully. Altitude reached over 140 kilometers. It was into space past the Kármán line, all the way into space. Now, further downrange, the FTS activated as well on the ship. And again, I've not heard a reason why. I do not know. 
Uh, NASA spaceflight today said that they had seen in some of their reviewing footage what looked to possibly be a liquid oxygen leak. Uh, essentially white puffs coming from the side of the vehicle. Completely possible as we don't know how everything was happening downrange. But the FTS system did engage and blow up the ship as well before it got to the Hawaii destination it was supposed to. Those will uh, force a mishap investigation by the FAA. They're good. When a vehicle explodes, it automatically counts as an anomaly and a mishap, and they have to investigate what took place, why it took place, and what needs to happen in order to prevent that from happening next time. That will happen. But with no damage to stage zero and with essentially all of the major things that went wrong last time working perfectly this time, the turnaround factor, I think, is going to be night and day. I think we're going to have a ship and a booster on the pad by the end of December, early January. We're going to have static fires conducted on both, as I'm pretty sure they're talking ship 28 and booster 10 or booster 11. I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure it's booster 10. Um, they've already been cryo-tested at Massey's, and now they're back at the, at the rocket garden. And it looks like they're getting pre prepped for whatever maintenance needs to be done now that they're trying to go through all the data. And then once all that work is done, those will get moved to the pad for uh, static fire test, for uh, wet dress, all this stuff. And then I bet by February, I'm going to, I said I would be happy by Christmas this time. I'm going to give you, I'll be happy by Valentine's Day next time. We're going to shorten up that window a little bit. I think that by Valentine's Day, we get a third Starship integrated flight test. And with NASA flying around the excursion zone, trying to see their this thing that's going to help them to the moon and to Mars and beyond, it's going to be... There's a lot of pressure on SpaceX to get this right and to get it right quicker and quicker. But they also have the willingness to go out there and continue to do the work over and over again. They're not afraid to blow these things up. They're not afraid. They just want to learn and get it all right and get it better and try, try, try again. This was the most beautiful space launch I had ever seen. Between the mock diamond and the plume were, were all absolutely amazing. They lost... I'm Literally right now, they're showing a side-by-side -side comparison of first flight versus second flight. Same altitudes. Same altitudes, same speed ratios... In the, in the ballpark, but not the same amount of engines because Raptors fizzled out the first time. Two, four, six Raptors are out right now at 1,300 kilometers. At 2,400 kilometers, or at 20, this is 24 or 26 kilometers high, 3,000 kilometers per hour. No out Raptor engines. So, I'm not a rocket scientist, you guys, and I don't know all the inner workings of all these ships. But what I can say is that what I've seen as a space fan, as time is going on, is when SpaceX and Elon see a mistake... Sorry, they just showed the view of Starship from space, which I hadn't seen yet. So that's pretty cool. Um, when, when they mess up and when they had all these issues the first couple of times it was very obvious that there were things wrong and, and that needed to be fixed. It took a lot of time to fix them. It took six months to get back on the right track between the inspections and the FAA and fish and wildlife and repairing the pad. And now with a lot of that not being a necessity, I think we're going to see a lot more a lot more turnaround. The cadence is going to increase. And that's going to be a great thing. We're going to see starships fly way more often and I think each and every time pending the next like if the next time if something goes wickedly wrong on the pad knock on wood then then we're gonna be in trouble but I don't I think that we've seen progress I think it just keeps going I think they just keep improving they just keep doing a better and better and better job and I think next time you know this time we got down range we went through stage separation amazing Next time I think we get to Hawaii. I think that it's just hitting these points, hitting these goals. And that's amazing. I hope that you guys seriously go check out NASA Space Flight, go check out Lab Padre. SpaceX's feeds are all amazing. They all did a really good job with filming. Uh, hats off to the SpaceX crew for 
all the work they did, all the repairs, all the late nights, all the overnights, all the stuff that they did to get that ship and that booster ready to go, ready to fly, all the D-stack and restacks, all the all the maintenance, all the grid fin actuators, all of it. The deluge system, the Firex system, all of it. Hats off to them for all of their hard work. And I look forward to bringing you continued space coverage as I hear more and more things through SpaceX and as we approach integrated flight test number three, hopefully coming up early next year, first quarter next year. Like I said, I'm hoping for Valentine's Day. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you haven't seen my live stream, you're welcome to go check it out. It's posted right here on my page on YouTube at Introverse Uncharted. Uh, I also had my previous Starship related videos. I have a few from uh, IFT1 and now currently, um, you know, uh, what, what I'm doing now post the uh, IFT2 situation. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. And as always, please remember to do more than simply exist and come with me into the Uncharted. Thanks, guys. See ya soon. Ignition sequence start. We have a liftoff.